Hi and welcome to Matt's workshop. In this video I'll show you how I've built and assembled my radius turning tool for my mini lathe. As I'm showing here, this tool is intended to be installed in place of the compound on the cross light of the lathe. It can spin around a full 360 degrees and the position of the center of the cutting tool is fully adjustable. Here is an animated exploded view showing all the parts that I need to build and assemble to create this tool. The first part that I will be presenting is the spinning base. This base spins between two thrust bearings on both sides which eliminate totally the play in the z-axis. The radial play is then eliminated by the use of a shoulder screw that is precisely dimensioned in the center of the spinning base. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I did not have a large enough chuck on my lathe to be able to turn such a large part. Therefore, the first operations on this part were done off-camera. As I'm showing here, I have machined three main features up to now, which is to drill the center hole that will receive the shoulder screw, and then I have made a recess on both sides to receive the truss bearings. Then the part is set up on my milling machine table, and I begin to work on the first feature, which is the dovetail slot that will receive the sliding plate. Using a large end mill, I start by making a square slot in the middle of the part. The slot has to be large enough to receive the dovetail cutter that I'm using next. And the dovetail shape is machined on both sides. Then, I need to machine a recess that is parallel to the dovetail. This recess is there to allow the installation of the four set screws that will lock the sliding plate. When the recess is fully machined, I can then mark the position of the four holes using a spot drill and then I drill them to the proper depth. Note that these holes will not be drilled and tapped all the way through. I want to keep a nice surface finish inside of the dovetail to allow the sliding plate to move smoothly. To machine the threads, I'm using a finishing tap to make sure to have complete threads as deep as possible. The next step is to machine a narrow slot that will have the same depth as the dovetail and that will end very close to its bottom edge. This will allow for this side of the dovetail to be flexible just enough to be able to move it with the four set screws. This is a very simple and reliable way to lock the sliding plate. I change the setup once again and I position the part so that the middle plane of the dovetail is perpendicular to the milling machine stable. Then, at the end of the dovetail, I machine a little flat surface. This surface is not absolutely necessary, but I thought it would be a nice reference if I ever wanted to measure the position of the sliding plate. When this is done, I turn the part about 30 degrees inside of the vise and I mill another flat surface in the middle of which I will drill and tap a hole to install the endo. I 
I take one last finishing pass and I'm all done with the spinning base. It's now time to start to work on the sliding plate. First, I've cut some aluminum stock a bit longer than what I need. Then, I place it in the vise and I clean the first surface to make it square. I flip the part in the vise and I finish the other side as well to bring the part to its final length. Now I place the part vertically in the vise and I work on the width of the part. The bottom of the sliding plate is cleaned up as well. And I finish by bringing the part to its final thickness by removing material from the top side. The next feature that I need to machine on this part is a shallow groove in the middle of it. This groove is going to be used to control the position of the tool holder and limit its play from side to side. The tool holder itself is going to be held in place in this groove by two flathead screws, so I need to drill four holes on the other side of the sliding plate and chamfer them. The next operation that I need to do on this plate is a bit more complicated. I now need to cut the angle surfaces on both sides of this plate that will mate perfectly in the dovetail that I've cut in the spinning base. In order to do that, I need to start by machining a temporary fixture that allows me to mount this sliding plate upside down and work on the two angle surfaces. To create this fixture, I place a large part of aluminum stock in the vise and I clean the top of it. Then. I work on machining both sides to adjust it properly to the slot that I have previously milled in the sliding plate. Now that this is done and that I have verified to have a proper fit, I need to drill and tap four holes to assemble the part on top of it. I now install the sliding plate on top of the fixture and I find its center plane using the edge finder. I can finally start to cut the dovetail shape on both sides of the plate. When this machining step is completed, I make sure that I have a good fit with the spinning base and I break both sharp edges using an anvil.
This completes the sliding plate and I can now start to work on the tool holder. The tool holder is a very simple part to do but it still requires some work. I start by squaring up a block of aluminum and I bring it to its final outside dimension using the fly cutter. The most critical dimension here is to make sure that the thickness of the block fits well in the groove that is milled in the sliding plate. I can now mill a deep groove in the block which will receive the cutting tool. I drill two holes in the back face of the block for set screws. These two set screws will be used to fine tune the position of the center line of the cutting tool. Then I place the block upward and again I drill three holes for some set screws. This time the set screws will be used to lock the cutting tool in place. The height of the cutting tool itself can be adjusted using some shims placed under it. Finally, I spin the block around and I drill the two holes that would be used to mount it on the sliding plate. This part is completed and it's now time to get on the lathe to work on the fixed base which will be installed underneath the cross slide. This part is made out of a 2 inch round aluminum stock. The rough length has been cut off camera and the first operation is to face off the first side. Then using some tracing glue I mark the distance at which I will cut a smaller diameter. When this diameter is turned, the next operation is to drill and tap an M6 threaded hole in the middle of the part. The remaining sharp edge is deburred with a file and the part can be removed from the chuck. To work on the other side of the part and to easily turn the outside diameter, I've made a temporary fixture using the center thread to mount the part.
The outside diameter is turned to size and the overall length of the part is adjusted. The part must now be installed in the milling vise and to do so I use the same fixture as before. The next and final operation on this part is to drill two holes. These holes serve as a feature to hold the part in place when the final torque is applied on the shoulder screw. This shoulder screw is the next part that I'll be working on. The reason why this is the last part that I work on is that I can now measure all the different parts and make sure to adjust the dimensions of the screw to apply a certain preload on the truss bearings while also making sure that the face of the screw will come in contact with the fixed base. Off camera, I started by turning the smallest diameter of this part, on which I will machine some M6 threads. But before I machine those threads, I turn the second diameter on which I need to adjust the smaller truss bearing. When I'm satisfied with the fit of the truss bearing washer, I bring the last face to its final dimension and I turn the outside diameter. I can now machine a relief cut at the end of the M6 threads and start to work on them. I test the threads with a standard M6 knot as I go and when I'm pleased with the fit I can move to the next operation which is to part off. The part is turned around and mounted in the chuck once again to give a better surface finish to the last face. And I also take some time to cut the nice chamfer on the edge. The last operation for this part is done on the milling machine. I need to cut a slot in the head of the screw to allow me to tighten it in place with a flathead screwdriver. And just for fun I decided to try to heat blue this part. It turned out okay, but I still have some things to learn with this technique. The last two parts, which are the handle and the handle knob, were done off camera. The handle itself is a very simple shaft with M6 threads at both ends. And for the handle knob, I actually needed the radius cutter to do it. So you won't see it in this video. As you can see here, all the parts are now finished and I have also gathered all the necessary hardware to complete the assembly. It's now time to see if all the parts fit well together by assembling them on the lathe. To do so, I first need to remove the compound from the lathe as well as the cross light.
With the cross light in hand, I can remove the stuck spinning base and install my fixed base into it. Then, I assemble a small truss bearing on the shoulder screw and I put some grease into it. I install some temporary screws in the spinning base to help me hold it in place when I apply the final torque on the shoulder screw. I flip the cross slide and prepare the installation of the large truss bearing. I place the spinning base on top and I tighten everything together. I confirm that everything spins properly and I move on to install the four set screws that will apply some pressure to lock the sliding plate in place. I quickly install the handle. and I start to work on the sub-assembly of the tool holder. I roughly fix the cutting tool in place, but its final position will have to be adjusted on the lathe. It's now time to reinstall everything on the lathe and to just give it a try. Everything fits very nicely and I'm pretty sure that it's gonna cut very well. You will find out more about this in my next videos. So this is it for this project, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, feel free to comment and share, and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.